Now, good day everyone, and just a quick one this one, and uh, it's Father's Day today, so we've been asked to go for a drive up the river and have uh, lunch at Bow Hill. So we thought we'd throw the cameras in the car and take them with us, so up through Morgan, then on to Bow Hill for lunch, and uh, then Swan Reach on our return back to Adelaide. So just a short one, hope you enjoy it. I'm Mick, and this is Sally. Together we've been caravanning Australia since the 1980s and more recently we started to put the videos together just to show you some of what we see out there. There's a lot to see in Australia and we hope you enjoy what we have here to show you. You can follow us on our trips via the following social media platforms. Leaving our home we made our way out through Gawler onto Sandy Creek and it was there that we met up with Dion and Sam and the grandkids as well as uh, Sam's parents and then on to Manham Falls into Manham across the river and then we made our way to Bow Hill. From Bow Hill we went into Big Ben back up to Swan Reach and then back home. By the time we did get home it was a fairly big day but then again an enjoyable day. The day started off cloudy and of course windy and uh, it tried to rain on a couple of occasions but at least it wasn't cold. It was on the Adelaide side of Manham that we did this right hand turn and that was going to take us up to the Manham uh, waterfalls. It's a gravel road coming in from this way but it was a good road and uh, very easy to drive on. We're now entering into the what they call the top car parking area for the Manham Waterfalls. A little bit of a dirt road coming in here and uh, don't be put off by the rocking and rolling through the windscreen with the camera. Quite easy to uh, get in and uh, lots and lots of room to park. We have seen in uh, past history some great photos of this waterfall area and uh, as we're walking down here it's not something that you could take a wheelchair on and you need to watch out where you're going but not a very long walk and you're down here and that's the creek here that we're looking at now where the water comes down through and we've seen some beautiful photos in the past but of course with the dry season that, that we're having at the moment there's very little water in the creek at all and uh, the falls are not running. The Manham Waterfalls is not very far out of Manham at all and uh, from there we were soon in Manham and turning down here to go down to the Marianne Reserve. With the recent flooding that the River Murray went through at the end of 2022, the beginning of 2023, there was an incredible amount of work that was done that protected Manham from flooding and uh, it's nice to see now that the Marianne Reserve and the area itself has bounced back very well. The inserted photo here shows how far away the Murray Princess was from the bank that they put down there to keep the water back and uh, certainly looking very nice now. There is a river flood level marker that sits between the Murray Princess and the Proud Mary and here it is here with the 1870 flood level height and when it zooms back now you can see how high it was at that stage and the recent flood that was early 2023 wasn't much lower than that flood level mark there. Manham is a well known and very popular area for hiring of houseboats on the River Murray and uh, we ourselves have uh, hired boats from here and enjoyed some very lovely times on the river. And I often like taking an opportunity for a photo shoot because during the flood you couldn't access this area at all. From the Marianne Reserve here in Manham we make our way up to the Manham Lookout and uh, it's a gloomy sort of a day with all the cloud about and it doesn't look as pretty as what sometimes it can do when you've got a beautiful blue sky and great water reflections.
During the drive today, we actually crossed the River Murray on four different occasions, and that was using three different ferries. Once the traffic had cleared from the uh, previous crossing, we now made our way down onto the ferry, and uh, for those that aren't aware of it, the government supplies these ferries for free of use to uh, road users. There's no charge at all. As with anyone that's familiar with the Cape York crossing up there on the river, there is a charge for that one. And uh, with our recent trip into Tasmania, there was also a ferry on the west coast of Tasmania that there was a charge. So very lucky in South Australia that we've got all these ferries and uh, free of use. Once off the ferry, we thought we'd have a look at the Bolto Camping Reserve. We have camped here before, and uh, after we'd uh, driven through there just to see how the area was recovering from the floods, we've then made our way on towards Bow Hill for lunch. It is a reasonable size camping area this one, but at the right time of the year when the weather's perfect, it can become very crowded. As we started making our way towards Bow Hill, we took the option of turning off here down to the left and that took us down along the river and allowed us to follow the water as we made our way towards Bow Hill. It can be very scenic on a right sort of a day and uh, Quite a pleasant drive. During the 22-23 floods, this area was closed off to the public, so not quite sure how far up the water did get in regard to a lot of the houses along here, but uh, it's recovering quite well and a little bit bare here, but never mind, in time it'll come back to where it was before. Now leaving that scenic drive, it's back onto the main drag towards Bow Hill, and we're making good time to arrive in Bow Hill for our midday luncheon. Our lunch was going to be held at the Bow Hill General Store and this is one building that's high up and was not affected at all with the recent flooding although the ground down lower was inundated with water. Very pretty spot this one to sit outside and eat your lunch. You've got the green lawn and you're looking down over the river uh, it was overcast as mentioned before but it was still very nice outside so we took the opportunity to sit out, enjoy our lunch and just take in the great view. We all enjoyed our meals here and uh, we'd have to give them 10 out of 10 for the meals and as far as the service and the hospitality went you could not get better. It was just terrific and it's just one of those things that will remain in our memory for a long time to come. It was a little bit too windy at this stage to put the drone up to catch any comparisons from the flooding to what it looks like today, but uh, yeah, there was a lot of water about back during the flood. Straight across from the general store is this park area here, and uh, for those that sort of maybe thought they had a little bit too much to eat or whatever during their meal, They've got all this exercise equipment that you can burn off a few extra calories that you may have put on. Undercover barbecues and seating and tables, very well set out. From Bow Hill, it was on to Walker Flat, and we're going to call into a lookout here. And uh, there are quite a few lookouts along, the, um, well, along this side of the River Murray as you're driving along. And it's certainly worth going in to have a look because you get a good elevated view as you look down onto the water. Mm -hmm. 
the views from the top of some of these lookouts is quite incredible. The Walker Flat uh, ferry is it's making its way across the river and it was that ferry that we're now heading to and we're going to go across to the Walker Flat General Store and see if we could pick ourselves up an ice cream. The yellow arrow here is pointing to the 2023 flood level and as we're driving down now to get onto the ferry you can see how high the water level actually came. It's a little bit hard to uh, get your mind around in reality but uh, it certainly did happen. Once all parked on the ferry the wheels of motion started to turn and the cables pulled us across to the other side of the river. As we come off the ferry on the western side of the river, you've got the Walker Flat General Store and it was there that we are going to see if we could get this ice cream. Not that any of us really needed one, but it was just a treat that we are going to have as part of the day out. The picnic area here at Walker Flat is a very popular area for houseboats to tie up. They've got the uh, mooring areas there for them to tie onto and that allows them to come up and uh, replenish their groceries and whatever else they may need and that's all available here in the general store. We made our way over into the general store and uh, yes we got our ice creams that we're after and uh, nothing like a few more calories on a Father's Day outing. While we're in the area here at Walker Flat we thought we'd go down and have a look at a couple of camping locations on the water and uh, well not on the water I shouldn't say but uh, alongside the water's edge and not real big area and uh, there are some people down here enjoying the river life but certainly uh, an option if you want to have a couple of nights on the river. Walker Flat we again crossed the river using the Walker Flat ferry and then we made our way onto Big Ben and as we turn off the road here we're not very far from Swan Reach and we do this left hand turn heading down to Big Ben and a very good road it's a dirt road but a very good road that'll take you about the four kilometre run from the bitumen down to the river. We enjoyed some great weather when we were camping here once before at uh, Big Ben and uh, not so pretty today but that's just weather conditions you've got to take what you get and we drove down here towards the uh, it's a locked road or I don't know whether it's locked but it's a shut gate at the end of this road here and that's where we're turning right now this is far down as what you can go and then that'll take you along the water edge. The road and the bush area is uh, not as clean as what we can recall it from when we were here before but when you get to the right spot there are a number of uh, very nice locations that you can pull up right alongside the water's edge and uh, if you're lucky enough to get one I reckon this one would still be right to come back to. From Big Bend it was back to the main bitumen road and we did a left hand turn and continued on to Swan Reach and it's possibly about only five kilometres from Big Ben until you get into Swan Reach. Swan Reach is one area or one town along the River Murray that was uh, severely affected and you can see the insert up there on the top right hand side and uh, that's the flooded area that we're now driving on and uh, really amazing to think that the water got up this high inside the town. The insert there to the top right hand side here shows the area around the ferry crossing itself and of course the ferry was out of action during the peak part of the flooding. Mm -hmm. 
Now going on to the ferry for our final river crossing on this uh, day outing and uh, that was going to take us across to the campground here. We've spent many uh, occasions here camping, it's a beautiful spot, great uh, cliff reflections at the golden hour and just a beautiful location to camp in. It was all blue skies and uh, unfortunately still windy as we did that final leg from Swan Reach heading back home. Oh, that's the end of this one and uh, only uh, something a little bit different to what we normally do and uh, hope you've enjoyed what we've shown you a few camping spots along the Murray that we've found today or seen today most of them we've been on before but uh, they're changing as the years go on so until that next video goes up you take care and look after yourself mm -hmm.